Hello and welcome to class number seven of Effective Meeting Management. Uh, this is Speech Communication 4397. If you're a channel surfer turn, tuning in for the first time, we welcome you. Uh, I'll introduce our guest shortly here. Uh, if you are new to uh, this particular program, this is a class in how to manage meetings, whether they are large conventions of several thousand people or whether it's simply a board meeting, a small committee meeting that you may find yourself in. Uh, we've traveled to a variety of cities around the United States uh, via video magazines and we'll be doing some more of that next week. This week, however, I have a longtime good acquaintance of mine here. Uh, this is Jane Jordan from the Hyatt Hotels. She's been with Hyatt, I believe, some seven years and she may choose to uh, fill in a little bit more about her background with you. But she's one of the professionals that some of you aspire to be. Uh, she's the kind of contact person in sales that many of you will need to communicate with in the future as you're setting up meetings, whether they're large or small. So she's going to be talking with you shortly about uh, the planning and factors that need to be taken into account for large meetings as well as small meetings. Uh, feel free to ask her questions, comment, and we welcome you, Jane, to class. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. As she mentioned, I'm with the Hyatt Regency Houston, and we are a division of Hyatt Hotels and Resorts. We have 109 properties throughout the United States and a number more overseas. Uh, we are specifically located downtown in the center of Houston, and we are a thousand room property, the largest one in the city. Uh, we can handle a variety of meetings and we are structured so that we can handle very large meetings and very small ones uh, and be able to meet any convention and catering needs. Uh, our hotel, as the largest hotel, also has some of the largest uh, staffing needs. We have 12 people in our sales department and we have another 10 in our catering department. And I oversee the, the 12 sales managers that are assigned various uh, various marketplaces. I was going to give you an overview of the type of people that you would be communicating uh, with at our hotel. This is an example of our, our sales department and one of the first questions we will be asking you if you are calling us about a meeting is, well can you tell me when you want to hold this meeting and how large you plan for it to be. We have a large hotel meeting category and a small hotel meeting category. At the top you'll see that we have we have designated uh, periods of time, winter, spring, summer, and fall for the sales managers that you would be working with depending on the time of year your meeting is held. We have another sales manager here that would handle any corporate meetings if you're handling a meeting for your company as opposed to an association. And we also have one person that only handles small meetings and for us a small meeting is a hundred guest rooms which usually translates to two to three hundred people or less and we have one person that handles all of that and then I, I serve as a liaison for all of our national sales accounts so we would we would first of all want to know who your sales manager would be and ask you questions about how large your meeting would be and what time of year it would be held there's other information that we would want for you to have we have an inquiry call report that our sales managers would have on hand whenever you speak with them we have some very basic information that we would want you to know before you contact the hotel. We would want to know what the function is that you're holding. We would like to know what the purpose is of your meeting. It's very important. A lot of people forget what the, uh, the real function of the meeting is to be. They just know they're holding one. And it's really important that you think ahead of time, is this a serious business meeting? Is this something that we're holding to be able to reward people that have uh, made their sales goals in their company? Is it something that is important for people just to, to meet and see each other once a year that have a common interest in their industry? If so, you want to make sure that you have a hotel environment that's conducive to receptions, that's conducive to people being able to, to uh, sit in a relaxed environment. If it's a, a very serious business meeting, you may want to choose a hotel that is in a business environment, such as the Hyatt downtown, because we are surrounded by um, some major businesses in our city. If you want it to be a, a fun type meeting, you may want to choose a, a Galleria hotel uh, that has shopping uh, nearby and a lot of free time. 
We're going to ask you questions um, about who actually determines uh, where the meeting goes. Often as the meeting planner, you don't get to choose the actual site, but you will go and, and look at various locations and decide whether it's a viable location and perhaps uh, narrow it down to three choices and then often a board of directors will decide where they want their meeting to go or perhaps uh, your boss or a public relations director or a meeting, uh, meeting director would uh, make the final decision. So we always want to know who is actually making the decision because the hotel salesperson will want to talk to more than just the meeting planner. They'll want to talk to as many people as possible to convince them to have the meeting at their hotel. Um, the hotel sales contact will also ask you questions about the dates when you're going to meet. We want to know specifically if you can be flexible in the time period. Very often uh, a group will decide when they want to meet and then try to find a hotel that can be, fit their needs over those dates. And very often it's best to have a few dates in mind that uh, your meeting can take place so that you have more choice of hotels that will have date availability and uh, you have a greater flexibility of, of pricing over those uh, time frames. We'll also ask you questions about your decision date. How quickly are you going to make a decision? Um, it, it is very important for the hotel to know if that space will be booked in the next month or two months or if you're not going to make a decision for another year or so because it's very important for the hotel to be able to predict ahead of time the pace at which our meeting space is booked. We'll ask you a lot of questions about your meeting budget, how much money you'll have to spend, and who is spending the money. If you're a corporation, very often the, the company itself will, will handle all of the expenses for a meeting. If it's an association, very often the members' uh, places of employment will pay for their attendance there. But if it's a nonprofit association, for example, we have the March of Dimes in this weekend, there are a lot of volunteers, and very often they will pay their own way. So that way we have an idea of what kind of budget that you're going to be working within and we can suggest the dates for you to meet uh, where the hotel can help you meet your budget. And we'll ask very um, detailed questions about whether you've held this meeting before in the past. One of the most important things to know is your meeting history. And that's a, kind of a hotel phrase, but it's a very important thing to know what the meeting has been like in the past. And we want to know how many guest rooms you used, how many people attended, what hotel it was held at, and uh, any information about the food and beverage requirements that you held, any problems that you might have experienced at that particular hotel in the past. We want to know what went well so that we make sure that we do the same things and reasons why you chose that hotel. Let me before. ask you a question. Do you ever call the previous hotels to check up on people Always. to see if they're telling you the truth? Always. There is a, a unwritten, unwritten like fellowship among all hotel chains. It doesn't matter whether it's a Hyatt, a Sheraton, a Hilton. All of us will, and I have a form actually that I can show you, that we um, send to the other hotels and they will tell us how many guest rooms. Here's, here's an example of the form that we use in Houston. It's called a group history request and we will send it out and we will ask that hotel to give us as much information as possible about that prior, prior meeting. We'll, we'll mention the organization, the meeting, the day that you tell us that you arrived and departed, and the most important thing is the block that you blocked at that hotel. If you said you'd need 100 rooms a night, then we would write down that you asked for 100 rooms. And then this, the P slash UP, is the pickup, and that's a hotel phrase for how many rooms you actually used during your meeting. Uh, that is a so very you expect them to use what they ask we, for. It, we do expect in some ways to use what you ask for, but in other times we really will only forecast what you've picked up in the past. You may say I need a hundred rooms, but if I receive a report that says last year when you held this meeting you only used 75, I'm going to base all of my rate negotiations on you actually only using 75 rooms. Will you bill them if they don't use what they signed In for? some cases we will. In some cases, if we know that our hotel can sell out over those dates and you don't give us enough prior notice that you're not going to use all 100 rooms, then very often we will pre-negotiate that we will charge you in full uh, for the rooms that you did not use. And that becomes more difficult if you're handling 
an association group where people do pay their own way as opposed to a company where your company is paying for everyone to attend. And it's more difficult to force people to go and, and uh, determine ahead of time how many people really are going to show up. So um, it also is very difficult when you're planning a meeting in advance. We talked about the, there are different types of meetings, the small meetings that are 100 rooms or less. Most people plan those meetings about a year out. But I've been booking meetings for the year 2003, 2005. Well, in the future, there are organizations and groups that need to plan 10 years in advance. They want to rotate around the country. They need to make their local chapters happy. They're so large that they need to make sure that their dates are secured in the future cities where they want to meet. And they will sign contracts 10 years in advance. And so each year, we will send out this group history report to that hotel where they met and review what their blocks and pickups were so that we know we're being accurate. If the group is growing, if the group is shrinking, uh, we will know and we'll be able to, to change our negotiations as the convention approaches. But it has to be over 100 rooms before you even consider it large. Yes, for our hotel, because we are such a large hotel. Some hotels will, will consider a 100 room meeting to be the largest one that they handle. So, so this is a question of perspective and experience. Yes, here. it really is. Um, it's, it's just very important that you can give the hotel as much information about your prior meeting. It puts you in a better light as far as negotiating strategy. Because if the hotel knows ahead of time that you blocked 100 rooms and you picked up 100 rooms, they know what they're working with ahead of time. My sales managers must give me one of these reports before they send out a contract to you. And so the faster we can get that information, the faster you can know what the availability is at the hotel and what types of rates we'll be able to offer. Yes, yes do you have a question? How do you go about handling meetings for the first time? The first meeting. The first time meetings. There are a lot uh, more special phrases and clauses that we will put in a, uh, in a contract that will help ensure that we're reviewing your needs very often and reviewing progress of how your attendance is um, coming along as far as registration, that type of thing. We will negotiate some minimums that you must pick up at least this number of rooms. Often we'll ask for prepayment so that you can um, be aware that 60 days prior to the meeting or 90 days prior to the meeting, a certain percentage of your anticipated bill will be due ahead of time. If it's a small meeting, and small meetings are often first time meetings, uh, we have a meeting connections contract that I will show you. As a matter of fact, we would give this right here, it's the, the meeting planner survival guide, and it's something we especially designed for first plan, first time meetings and first time meeting planners. And it, going through this, it just it talks about that small meetings can be big challenges and that survival depends on good planning, which is very, very important. And it's, it's important for the hotel that you do a good job and the meeting you're planning um, actually occurs the way you plan, um, as it is for the hotel to know that this meeting is happening. Let's it, get it over here. So sure. It goes through about this. accommodations, food and beverage, the program itself. The most important thing is a budgeting worksheet. And we will sit down, especially with first-time plan, first mm -hmm. meeting planners or a first-time meeting, to uh, review what your budget plans are and make sure that your uh, financial picture is realistic. If you'll turn to uh, one of the further pages. Okay, I'll it'll zoom show you in a little budget. bit here so they can read this at home. This is a, a piece that the Heights of Texas developed. To, to plan a meeting from the from initial contact until when the when the meeting takes place, say for an, an not a small group but for an average size group, how much time do you need? Well, uh, most average size groups um, are within a year's time. Uh, you need to have most of your details down. Uh, most groups that are within uh, that are 100 to 300 guest rooms peak night will plan from one to two years out. In the past, people negotiated even further out. Um, and we're, we're learning now that the booking window and the pace of business has quickened, whereas people are planning uh, meetings in a shorter time frame. Uh, 
Um, I, I've got a section here that I'll go through that's a timeline for the small meetings and then I've got another meeting planner's guide that is for our large conventions that will also go through a timeline of what information you should know um, ahead, of, ahead of your convention so you can plan um, well ahead of time. The things that the hotel will want to know is what your budget is. We'll want to know uh, what you've budgeted for guest rooms. And hall fees are if, if you're using an, an exhibit hall, often you will need to pay for that. Uh, the site staff, if you need to bring in people for registration, um, other, other functions on site. Uh, Audiovisual equipment is a very large cost for a meeting. Um, very often the meeting planner won't know what their audiovisual needs are until very close in, but I can't emphasize enough to learn about your meeting ahead of time because audiovisual needs affect the size of the meeting room that you need to, that you need to book. Uh, people are getting very high tech in their audiovisual needs. They like to have rear screen projection and rear screens can take 30 feet out of a of meeting room. And the sales manager may have booked a meeting room that can fit your attendance and then you add rear screen projection and suddenly that room is far too small. So I can't emphasize enough to learn what your audiovisual needs are, what the goals of the meeting are um, ahead of time as much as possible to make sure that you have the right size meeting and the right size budget to handle the costs affiliated with it. Now in Houston, can they operate their own equipment? I know some cities like Chicago are unionized and yeah. you have to pay just to have the machine plugged into the wall. That's true. Um, Texas is a right to work state. There are very <coughs> few unions here. Um, our hotels, a specific example, is very common to what hotels are like in our area. We have a company, Auto Visual Inc., and they are based in our hotel and they have a contract and we get a certain percentage of the profits that they make off events that they hold in our hotel. However, you are not required to work with them. You can choose any audiovisual supplier that you want. We prefer that you use a company that we've chosen to represent us on site because whenever anything goes wrong with a meeting, if a light bulb's out on an overhead projector, if, if anything goes wrong, it's always the hotel's fault. They don't say, oh, it's the audiovisual company's fault. It's always the hotel's fault if something goes wrong with a meeting. And it's very, very important that you spend time up front knowing what your meeting structure is going to be like and knowing what your budget can be and talking with several audiovisual companies to make a comparison of cost and ability and comfort level. Yep. As far as your uh, <clears throat> using the, the people that you use, the audiovisual people, are they independent contractors to hire, subcontractors to hire? Well, they are independent contractors. In other words, you're not liable for their mistakes. We are absolutely not liable. <laughs> but. <laughs> But, but by our sheer affiliation with them, there's always a, a shared responsibility. Uh, a lot of communication goes on between the convention services manager and the audiovisual company, but the audiovisual company is responsible for making sure their own contracts are followed through and that their own personnel are on site to set up the audiovisual in the room prior to the meeting and to run the equipment, to tear it down, to make sure that all of the equipment is maintained in a safe manner. And that, that backup is there if anything goes wrong with the VCR, or the television, or whatever equipment you're using. You're saying you're jointly liable to an extent. Is that in ways of reputation of the higher name? Yes. Because obviously, legally, they can't put their hands in your pocket. If the whole meeting goes to pot, it's between you and them. Hyatt won't get touched, but you're talking about, I take it, the Hyatt reputation. Or, yes. hang, hang on, are you not getting him? Which one, left or right? Well, and push the whole thing down and keep it down. Okay. okay. All right. As far as you saying the liability is being incurred, I would uh, take it you mean not legal liability, but the good Hyatt reputation has been soiled. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if this doesn't go right, you've got 20 Moose Lodge Elf people, you've got 20 more Moose Lodge Elf people, and Hyatt goes down the tube no matter what state they go back to, correct? Exactly. Exactly. There is a uh, brochure, we call it a, a sales kit, that you would be sent as a meeting planner. And that is something that we always include as a, an audiovisual brochure. But it's going to include a, uh, an overview, a brochure of the hotel, and we can show 
that there's always a nice pretty picture on the outside. Okay, uh, let's get a close-up again. Okay. I want to be sure okay. the home viewers get at least a quick run through decorations, okay. programming. Okay, refreshments. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make a few points about this also. Um, these are some things that you need to do on your own as far as the invitations and the programs. But often hotels will have business centers and can save you a great deal of money by printing them on site because then you don't have to mail them if you're planning a meeting out of town. Mail them and then say your prayers that the boxes actually arrive <laughs> in time, intact. And uh, very often uh, you're going to find that many, many hotels are offering full service business centers and they'll, they'll do a lot of your printing needs. So you can pre-negotiate those also. Is it nice to let you know when a big shipment's coming in? It is nice to know. Most <laughs> hotels don't have a great uh, deal of storage area for outsiders to use. We have so many storage needs ourselves that when you are having large numbers of boxes, we, we require that they be on the day of arrival and that type of thing so we don't have to store too much of it. A lot of the miscellaneous costs you also need to think about is your telephone costs, the transportation, again, the photocopying, and uh, you want to always add 20 percent here to your budget total because things are always going to go over budget. No matter what, we always say please, please count on 20 percent more and that way you know you'll be safe for any unforeseen uh, issues. Uh, this week, for example, as I mentioned, we have the March of Dimes Convention with us. They're a tax-exempt organization in almost all cities. They found out very late that they were not exempt from our local city tax, and they're still working on that. And that's a substantial amount of money. I believe it's $15,000 more that they'll be responsible for that they hadn't budgeted for ahead of time. But by using this 20% rule, any unforeseen um, issues like that can can already be uh, taken care of. Doesn't Hyatt, especially all the other major hotels, have a policy of making sure that the tax exempt number is in at least four to six weeks for verification purposes? Yes. yes I mean, we it seems logical to verify that you're not going to be exempt from the city tax by virtue of city ordinance. Yes, we did verify that with them, and they felt that they, um, their locals could get uh, all the additional paperwork done. And you know how government works, so things are, then went a little bit slower than they uh, anticipated. So that's the situation they're in. <clears throat> okay, in addition to getting a, a meeting planner survival guide, you'll, you'll get an idea of what the hotel looks like. They'll have a nice big glossy photo on the outside. And then the insides of these brochures will, will give you an idea of whether this hotel is right for you. We always try to show off some of our more... Uh, beautiful suites, often your executive director, or the president, or a very important speaker will be given a uh, suite that uh, you want to make sure reflects what uh, they expect. And then we'll also show other pictures of, of uh, typical meeting rooms and guest rooms. Here's a boardroom here that often we use. And then the uh, inside page is going to be the most important one that you need to study before you decide if you want to uh, pursue holding a meeting at that particular hotel. It's a very small diagram, but you can see that there are four uh, meeting areas or four meeting floors at our particular hotel, and it's designed so that a small meeting can take place simultaneously with a large meeting. Our main ballroom floor has a large registration area, a foyer area, office area for your staff, and we also have some large traffic and all the registration needs. And if you're going to have a smaller meeting, save 350 people, our second floor has our junior ballroom, which seats 350 people, and it has five large breakouts and then two smaller rooms on that same floor that can uh, fit your breakout needs and your office needs all in the same area. Uh, if you're holding a very small meeting of, say, 50 people or fewer, our fourth floor is designed for that. We had nine meeting rooms on that floor, and they're laid out specifically for business meetings. Um, it's an area where you can be separate from the conventioneers and have some peace and quiet if you're having a very serious business meeting. So you want to look at how the meeting space is laid out, and you'll want to know where your particular meeting may be planned. The hotel may not confirm with you the exact meeting room name well in advance. Often they'll wait until 30 days out because they'll need to juggle all the different events in that hotel 
that are occurring at that time and want to make the best decisions for each meeting. So often they'll wait until it's publication date for you and your brochure to confirm what the meeting room names are. And yet even then there's no guarantee, and you'll see when we review the, the uh, convention uh, contracts, that the hotel always reserves the right to change that meeting uh, room that you're assigned to because sometimes a meeting size will grow last minute and obviously you want to accommodate everyone as best as possible. Sometimes your meeting size may uh, grow smaller and you don't want your attendees to feel overwhelmed just a few people in a very large room. And so you'll learn that that, that is something that the hotel uh, will make decisions on. At the very beginning when I showed you how we have assigned our sales managers to work with specific time periods it is to facilitate that need. We will be the only hotel that, that you will see that assigns uh, sales manager uh, accounts according to when they meet. We're an experiment for the rest of our company because it does help a sales manager to have already worked with all the events that are occurring at that time period so that they can know firsthand that a particular group will not be suitable to be in a meeting room next to another group that may be very loud if another group is very quiet. Before, if you'd had 12 sales managers all perhaps booking events on that same day, it's very difficult to maximize the communication to know exactly what another meeting may be doing that's going on next door to you, if they're going to have a, a, a lot of uh, noise and music uh, with their presentations. And another group may even be a prayer meeting and need a lot of quiet, uh, quiet time. So uh, that's one of the, the first things that you'll look through. And then hotels will send you a lot of paraphernalia. We will show you up front our audiovisual that we have talked about before. We'll try to sell you on off-premise catering. A hotel has a limited number of banquet rooms, and so they expand their revenue base by catering an event anywhere where your event uh, anywhere possible. Again, again, March of Dimes is on my mind. They're having a uh, a picnic outside and we're hoping there won't be rain but over at uh, the Sam Houston Park where the historical homes are this downtown and we like when groups do that because then we can sell our ballroom for yet another food and beverage function so uh, many hotel chains are going to that uh, we'll try to encourage you to, to uh, use a lot of suites and to hold hospitality events many local chapters of associations will want to buy suites and and hold a few entertainment events, so you'll see information about that. We'll try to lure you with meeting dividends, which is like a frequent flyer program uh, that most hotels have in place. Uh, the more room nights you put into a hotel, the more uh, points you get, and that's usually for uh, future vacations. Often a very large, a large convention of, say, two to 300 room nights can, can win you a vacation in, in Hawaii. So, it's a very beneficial thing for you to ask uh, if there is a program like that and it's very important that that be negotiated up front. Very often meeting planners find out later that there is a program involved but the, hotel to the, co the cost to the hotel is about a dollar a room night that you book. So it's very important that we know ahead of time because the hotel salesperson will usually add a dollar or two dollars to your guest room rate or to some revenue function in um, in your program so that we can cover our costs of giving you these, uh, these extra points. So that's something also that you need to think Are about. Are telling us they're not ask. really free? <laughs> well, they're not necessarily free. That is true. Everything has to be paid for. And then if you're holding a business meeting or an international meeting, this is an example. I've got uh, two different languages here. One, we've got Spanish because obviously in Houston we have a lot of meetings from Mexico and South America and this will review the different services that you need. And this will give you an idea of the caliber of the hotel and the type of business that they represent. Another th important thing to ask about a hotel is what their business mix is. You want to know if you're going to fit in. Does this hotel strictly do conventions or do they have a lot of business travelers? Uh, depending on the type of meeting that you're planning on, it's very important to know that. Our hotel is very unique in that we're roughly 50% uh, individual traveler, individual business traveler, and 50% conventioneers for our occupancy. That doesn't mean on every given night that only half of our hotel is conventioneers and half is business travelers. Uh, during the business week, which is basically Sunday through Thursday night, we can have up to 600 guest rooms that are filled with our individual business travelers. 
and on the weekends when very little business goes on, we may have up to 90% of our occupancy be convention business. And then, yes. So 90% of your business on weekend was the get acquainted with your wife again business. <laughs> That's always A lot of that is. Uh, for us, we only get about 10% of our, uh, our house count is an individual pleasure traveler. Houston is not necessarily a tourist destination, but because of our location in downtown Houston and with the theater district and a lot of events uh, that go on downtown, very often people live in the woodlands or Clear Lake, Sugar Land, some outlying areas will stay the weekend if they're attending events downtown. And we also do extensive wedding business too because there are a lot of uh, very large, beautiful churches downtown and people will hold receptions in a, a lot of the uh, high-rise office building uh, plazas and, uh, and then have their guests stay at our hotel. Mm -hmm. Yes? Does your hotel have the right to refuse booking a certain group's convention or meeting for yes. any reasons? Yes, we do. We do. Um, very often the guest history will tell us that. They'll tell us if uh, the group did not pay their bill in the past. They'll tell us uh, if a lot of damage was done to the hotel. Um, we can make business decisions based on that. Uh, also because of the guest room rate that they have paid or the type of hotel that they've used in the past, that will reflect whether that is a good uh, group for us to be booking to meet our business needs. Uh, very often we won't outright refuse, but we will offer rates that we need to get over those dates and often by a group being used to paying very low rates and us saying, well, we need $165, it must be rack rate because of you know, potential damage, this, that, and the other, um, the group will choose another hotel. They we we choose know. our own terms. I mean, Hyatt especially is a privately held company. Rack rate is the I'm walking sorry. off the street? Yes, yeah. rack rate, uh, and here is exactly where the term came from. This is our rack brochure. You'll see racks and racks of uh, hotel brochures at airports and at the Houston Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we will publish rates each year in here and uh, this year it's $169 for us. And a certain percentage of our business does pay that rate. But most conventions, most uh, corporations will negotiate uh, percentages, percentage discounts from that rack rate. The dress code excuse we used to use in the hotel business. Tonight was a no tie night. If you didn't, the person you didn't want in didn't have a tie, sorry, you need a tie. <laughs> the guy goes back and gets a tie. We forgot to tell you about the jacket and oh. the event's over. <laughs> I haven't heard any stories like that. But a hotel is very similar to um, an airline in that uh, when a plane flies, if a seat is empty, it can't be filled again. That revenue cannot be made up again. Um, you'll notice that uh, airlines have a certain number of first class seats. They'll have a certain number of uh, business coach at a certain rate. They'll sell a certain number of seats uh, to travel agencies for tour groups at a very low advanced discount rate. They may run some certain specials for a limited number of seats, and they'll expect a number of seats to be sold at, uh, at an advertised rate, and the hotels run in a similar way. You have a question? Will your hotel, for instance, say you've got this booking coming up and you've only suggested a 50% deposit, and for whatever reason this deal falls through, um, you're going to have a lot of rooms on your hand. As for makeup of revenue, will you then sell the rooms at a break-even rate, say, then rather than go empty? Well, that depends. We, that would be a whole other uh, class, as a matter of fact. We spend a great deal of time at uh, what we call yield management meetings, and that is to manage the, uh, the type of business in our hotel each night. The first class example on airlines is our rack rates at the hotel or our business plan rooms that we charge a $15 surcharge uh, to be a part of, and our suites that often business executives will use at hundreds of dollars a night because they expect those perks. Uh, there's another layer of, of uh, guest rooms as far as pricing goes, which is our preferred rate that a lot of our travel agencies will book at a very short, uh, in a short time frame. And so we uh, know how many of those rooms to expect, say, a week before arrival, two weeks before arrival, three, three weeks before arrival. So we'll maximize how many of the high-rated rooms we want to protect and make sure that those aren't sold ahead of time at a lower rate. Then we also know that our volume accounts, which are our corporations that use our hotel frequently, we, and in 
the Hyatt in Houston, we're surrounded by the world headquarters for Exxon and Shell and Penzoil and Texaco, Enron, very large uh, companies that often use eight to 10,000 guest rooms from us a year. And because of the volume that they use, they um, are in a position to negotiate certain discounts also off their guest room rates. And very often we will give them last room availability. We will promise them if there's a room left, we will give it at your negotiated rate. So we need to protect that also. And we also know the usual rate of booking for those groups. And then we'll also um, have our uh, individual business travelers that, that go through travel agencies at, at certain rates. We'll have a certain number of uh, tour and travel groups that often pay very low rates uh, and we usually know ahead of time. They usually book well in advance. And uh, then our, our different convention blocks, our large groups and then our small groups. And based on how many rooms out of all of those tiers of business, then we will make decisions what our guest room rate will be to be able to maximize revenue. Sometimes we will give a, a more affordable rate based on your length of stay. You may hear a reservationist say, well, that's a ML2. You must stay two nights to get that rate, or you must stay three nights. Because very often it's better for us to give you a lower rate, not charge you the rack rate, the very highest one, if you can stay two or three nights. It's very expensive for a hotel to have someone just stay one night because of the housekeeping, all the labor that's involved. It's much, much more affordable for a hotel to book someone that's going to be a longer stay. And that's why our volume rate accounts are very important to us because very often those businessmen will come and stay in Houston uh, for an average uh, stay of three nights. That's why we pursue the convention market so much because the average stay for them is between three and four nights. Uh, the pattern that you meet at our hotel is very important to the rate that you're going to be negotiating. Like I mentioned, we have such a very large uh, business traveler, that, uh, a large number of business travelers that come in from Sunday through Thursday. So your group size needs to fit in with the rest of our hotel's game plan. We probably won't want you if you need, want, if you need 600 guest rooms from us when we anticipate that we'll book 600 guest rooms um, at a higher rate. Uh, from our business travelers. But if you want to come in on a Wednesday and stay through Sunday when our business travelers are departing, then you can get a much, much better rate from our hotel because that's when we need you. Uh, if you're willing to meet over uh, certain times, certain uh, holidays, you will get even better discounts. Uh, there are holidays that you would not realize affect a lot of business plans, but there are religious holidays such as Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the companies are very sensitive about their attendees uh, holding a meeting over those dates. So very often, if your group is not affected by that um, certain holidays, then that can be a time when you can get a very good convention rate or you can get a lot uh, more uh, concessions and things offered to you ahead of time. So it's very important to think about when you're going to meet and to be flexible about that. In our hotel, if you wanted to start a meeting on a Tuesday, we would not uh, negotiate very strongly with you because if you arrive on a Tuesday, that affects how many people we can let into the hotel Sunday, and that affects how many people will be staying in our hotel Saturday night. If you check out on a Saturday, it's very difficult to get the convention to start on a Saturday. So you need to think also about the pattern that you're meeting and, and know those answers ahead of time. Thank you very much for a very thorough answer. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it, it's very, there's actually a science to maximizing hotel revenue, and hotels have come a long way with computers and computer systems emulating what the airlines have done right and done wrong in some instances, but trying to, to take uh, the best of both worlds. He just mentioned overbooking. That is something a hotel will do. Uh, we have a certain number of people that we know uh, will say they're staying four nights and will stay three. We have a lot of historical data that we use to determine that. Uh, hotels have now uh, emulated the airlines in yet one area, uh, one more area, in that if you say you're going to check out on Friday and decide you want to check out on Thursday, we will charge you a fee and we'll tell you ahead of time. Currently our fee is $25. A lot of resorts will charge you the full night uh, if you depart ahead of time and we'll have you sign in at check-in that you're aware that we will charge. We call it an early out fee. So we will overbook based on the number of people that normally uh, 
we'll leave early and uh, we'll call in or we'll have, you know, problems getting in because mm -hmm. of airlines or airplanes or business needs change. And uh, also with conventions, when we do that uh, history report, we'll ask for a no-show factor. We'll ask for how many rooms were reserved 30 days out, and that way we'll know how many people made reservations and then did not show. There's another no-show factor we ask for, which is the same day no-show. And that's also very important to know. How many people up to the day of the meeting beginning had reservations, and then how many people actually showed up to the front desk? That's important information that you should have as a meeting planner because the hotel may not overbook enough to accommodate all of your attendees. You may say you need 100 rooms, and you may use 100 rooms, but you may not know that that hotel last year actually booked 120 rooms for you to have 100 people show up. So it's very important for you to know what, uh, what your no-show factor is, both 30 days out and the same day. You're a meeting planner, or I should say on your end of the, of the uh, spectrum of this deal. When you're going to book a group, don't you normally have an envelope uh, or a box that has the number of rooms? In other words, you're not hoping people walk up, hi, I'm with Firestone, and so we go right to the rack and pick them a room. Shouldn't these rooms be blocked off already? And everybody have their little envelope and their key is in there, so when you know as they're arriving that little box is getting smaller and smaller, oh, Lord, we're going to be 20 rooms short. You can grab another block of rooms, reserve those, and put them away before the other 20 people show up at midnight, say some flight from Dayton got canceled because of snow. You're going to have 20 people standing in the middle of the street very irate at the group meeting manager. Yes. We do, we do protect uh, our late arrivals, and we can guarantee them. There's a 6 p.m. arrival uh, term that you'll hear a lot about. If somebody puts a credit card deposit, the hotel will not sell that room. And with Hyatt, we have something called 1-800 check-in, so that if you are at the airport and you are delayed and you know the hotel is full, you will call that 1-800 number. The hotel will pre-assign your room, give you your room number, and that any boxes, any materials, any important phone messages that you're worried you may be missing can all be sent to your voicemail in your room. All of your boxes are already delivered, all the materials that you need to your guest room. And then uh, the possibility of your room being sold, even though you had a reservation, uh, is, is minimized. Uh, we're very heavily computerized now. Uh, we don't necessarily need to pre-key pack it to save labor time. We will for any uh, VIPs that are arriving or any special needs uh, as far as guest rooms. We will do that, but, but very often there's not a box anymore. It's just the computer telling you your available rooms and the number of expected arrivals and the number of early departures and the number of same day. Uh, people that just show up at the desk asking for reservations. And do you ever have a problem with the people who don't want to check out? They have a three-day reservation that is and decide they want to stay That is always a, week. a very large problem, yes. Can you boot them out or do you just have to yeah. surround them? No, that? legally you cannot boot them out and that's been, uh, that's been a large problem. Uh, very often someone will make a reservation wanting to stay an entire week and will say, I'm sorry, you can only stay three nights. We're sold out the additional nights. If a room becomes available, we will let you know. We will wait list you. But these people will check in and they'll stay in their room. And uh, it's, it's very, yeah, ex especially the experienced travelers like you mentioned. And that is very, very difficult for a hotel to manage because you're expecting these people to check out. Our only remedy is that we can charge them the very, lar very highest published rate, which for us is $169 instead of whatever discount rate he may have been given. And that guest needs to decide what's more important to him, being able to uh, stay in his room and, and therefore pay the rate or, uh, or leave the hotel and we'll offer other accommodations and, and help find a, a neighboring hotel for him to stay at. But it, it makes it very difficult when a large convention is arriving and, and a person does not leave their room on time. Our checkout time is 12 noon, our check-in time is three o'clock. So that's a three hour window. And when you have a very large hotel, sometimes we can have a turn of 600 rooms that we need to clean that day in preparation for a check-in. So it's very, very important that, that people follow those rules and that's why hotels are getting tougher. And even a late checkout, they will charge you a fee to try to deter people from doing that. 
and it's, it's just very important that we know ahead of time that that may or may not be a problem based on the reason why that business traveler is in Houston. The reason we did that was because our hotel number one was unionized at one time and housekeeping quit at a certain hour. <laughs> and if you come strutting down through the lobby with a bunch of suitcases and decide, gee, we're leaving today and we've got five, six dirty rooms that won't get reached till tomorrow morning, where's our wow. revenue? Yeah. Okay, but you that, were in Puerto Rico, is that right? Yeah, resort hotels. Yeah. I mean, some people would just decide, gee, they got homesick, they didn't like the fun in the sun and they wanted to go back to the dreary snow and they trot down to the lobby. I'm checking out. And they get aggravated when you throw on room and tax for the last night. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I don't have a maid on duty. Who's going to clean this room? We don't have the excuse of not having a maid on duty. I mean, a hotel is a 24-hour business. We do have a 24-hour housekeeping department. For emergencies. Uh, one would presume for emergencies, but you don't keep your full maid staff that you yeah, have Yeah, we don't keep a full maid staff, but we, we can turn rooms at night if need be. Um, it, it is nice in some ways for a hotel not to be unionized because you do have some more flexibility to meet the guest room needs. And that is something you may want to consider if you are planning a meeting for uh, union cities such as New Orleans, Washington, D.C., Chicago, L.A. Often your meeting costs, when we say add 20 percent, you may want to add 40 percent because you need to know up front what all of their rules and regulations are and try to work smart with them. You may not want a meeting that meets over a weekend because of union rules in those particular cities. Whereas in our city, very often, uh, our staff members may hold more than one job, and they're very happy to be able to work on weekends or to work irregular hours. And so it works um, to our benefit also. I wanted to show you briefly, if you're planning a small meeting, you will be receiving a very small one-page contract. And if you're planning a very large meeting, you'll have a very large detailed contract. And I was going to spend some time on that so you know the terms uh, that the hotel will be negotiating with you and the things that you may want to decide ahead of time that, that you want to be able to get as a perk for booking that meeting. Our small meetings are called Hyatt Meeting Connection. They're called that because one phone call should be able to get you uh, a salesperson that will also service your event when your meeting takes place on premises. Very simple name, address, phone number. The most important thing here to note is this room block. We want to know the day of the week, the date, the numbers of single rooms, double rooms, and for us double doubles means rooms that have two double beds, and so you may have up to four people in that room, how many suites you need, the number of meeting rooms that you need, so the total rooms uh, booked. That's the most important thing <coughs> there. We will give you negotiated rates, and again, if it's a small meeting, you should not expect as large a discount from our rack rates as you would be getting for a larger meeting. Uh, you would have uh, our rates mentioned here, very often small meetings work with travel agencies that are commissionable, so we need to mention that there. Uh, we have a cutoff date here. We have the reservation method that you're coming through, that they're going to be made by you either faxing a rooming list or sending in reservation cards, or the individuals will call in themselves. And then this phrase, reservations must be received by, is usually a date that's 30 days prior to the meeting. Sometimes we will negotiate three weeks out, depending on what your meeting needs are. But that's very important. We will honor the number of rooms that we give you here up until 30 days out at that particular guest room rate that we've negotiated on that contract. After that, then we will talk about how many more rooms you may need, and we will tell you what rate we need to charge you for those rooms. Very often we'll be able to still honor the pre-negotiated convention rate but if the hotel is going to be very full, or if you as a meeting planner wanted to encourage people to book their rooms 30 days out so you knew how many people to expect, very often you will say, if they don't get their reservation in by the cutoff date, I want you to increase the rate by $25, $30, $50, whatever you think is a significant amount of money that will have people plan uh, further ahead so that your job is easier. I often recommend people to do that. Of course, it benefits me as a hotel also to know uh, ahead of time, but it, it will benefit you. It talks about the payment procedure, whether you set up a master account or if all of your attendees will pay on their own. There's almost always meeting uh, costs affiliated with your audiovisual, with meeting room rental, any food and beverage, and so we would want you to either provide a credit card, a direct billing form, or set up a master account with us. Uh, We'll talk a little bit about your meeting space and banquet requirements each day, what kind of function you're holding. 
uh, how the room will be set up if you're going to hold a meeting that's similar to this. The setup of this room right here we call classroom appropriately. There's usually three uh, chairs per six foot table and uh, that setup is a little bit more expensive for a hotel. At a hotel you would have tablecloths um, on the tables. You would have uh, water pitchers, glasses, candies, pads, and pencils as part of that set. And if you need your attendees to take a lot of notes or they're going to be sitting there for a great uh, amount of time, it would you know, it'd be less disruptive for them to have water on the table, et cetera, et cetera, um, just be prepared that the hotel may charge you more, they may charge you a setup fee, they may charge you labor, they may just charge you meeting room, meeting room rental when you ask for a room to be set up classroom style. Theater style is when you set a room with just chairs, the way an amphitheater is set, and that is the most inexpensive set for a hotel um, to manage. So when you're planning your meeting budget, you also need to think about what type of meeting it is, if it's a lecture style class, or if it's very, if you're going to have testing going on during your meeting and you need to have a table, then uh, you need to plan and budget appropriately for that. Um, if you're going to have a larger meeting, more than 100 rooms, we will give you this very thick meeting planner's guide that gives you a lot more information. And we will give you a very, very thick contract. Uh, this particular one is 26 pages long of different choices. This is a contract template, and I'll show you the the first page here. Uh, very simple at the beginning. Do we just uh, put your group name, who you are, your contact, see or a meeting planning firm to assist you with your meeting. We will talk about uh, the most important thing on this first page is if we're holding your dates on a first option basis. When we send you this contract, the hotel is agreeing that they will hold these guest rooms and this meeting space. Uh, for you on a first option until you make a decision. We will agree on a date right here, a decision date that we will hold um, all of this meeting space and, and that is something that is very important to know up front, your decision making process within your organization so that the hotel can make the right decision as far as how long they should hold these dates for you. Very often, the dates that you want may be held by someone else. They may not have signed a contract with the hotel, but they have asked us to hold it, and we've sent out a contract, and they have a decision date pending also. So we may say that we're holding it on a second option basis, and we're going to pre-negotiate all the terms uh, in, in anticipation of these dates being released to you on a first option basis. We will approach the other group, and we'll give them a certain amount of time to make their decision and uh, we will proceed with all the terms that we've negotiated in this contract. Okay, and the next page talks about, very similar to what you already saw, the guest room block, and uh, we go into a great deal of detail about how many double-doubles. Our room inventory needs to be uh, pre-blocked ahead of time so that if your guests uh, need to have four people in a room, then we have the right number of beds reserved in advance. If you have uh, businessmen that expect a higher caliber of room, we want to make sure that we have enough of the business classrooms reserved for you. We have a special phrase, headquarters hotel, that most uh, people will ask you to sign, and that is merely telling the hotel that you will publish them as the headquarters hotel, you will not advertise any other hotel uh, for your meeting, and that all of your guest rooms will be brought to that hotel, and that the hotel will have first um, priority for any revenue producing events so that if you are going to hold an event off the hotel premises that you will give our hotel staff a, um, a fair bid so that we can compete to host that business also. Very often you may uh, book our hotel and several years in advance and your organization grows and we'll talk about future overflow also. Uh, we will work with you to increase your block within our own hotel and then we will help you find uh, neighboring hotels to accommodate uh, your guest rooms if you should outgrow our hotel. We have a very interesting phrase here, new hotel construction. Again, it's a whole nother topic, but they're planning on building a convention hotel next to the George R. Brown. It may open as early as 1998 and so we are in a protective mode saying that if a new hotel is constructed that uh, it doesn't matter, you're still going to stay with us 
and you don't have a right to uh, the right to cancel because of that. Uh, the room and space block review is very important. You'll notice uh, we, this one just gives an example of two years out. But if you book a hotel five and six years out, we will review it annually uh, so that we can make adjustments in what your hotel needs are as your group needs change. They grow, they diminish, um, whatever. And so that's a very important phrase that you'll see in the, in the contracts. And be aware that it works on both sides. Meeting planners like to have that in there because they're not locked into some specific contract terms. They can be renegotiated. <laughs> the pre and post contract uh, conference rates are very important. Very often people will turn these into vacations. And you want to know, can I get this discounted rate that I've negotiated uh, for people that are arriving early or staying late? Very often a hotel can honor that. Sometimes they cannot. You'll see that we'll offer them just one day before and one day off and one day after your main convention dates. That's our standard. Some hotel chains will do three days before and three days after, but I think you'll see fewer and fewer hotels doing that because it's not to our advantage to pre-guarantee a lower rate until we know what our entire hotel's inventory will look like for that day. Uh, the pricing, we put that a little bit sandwiched in the middle of it. And actually, that will be one of the last things your hotel sales manager will quote to you if they're doing their job right. They should know their history. They should know all of your needs. They should know your program, how many meeting rooms that you're using, all of your budget needs before they quote you a price. Um, yes? Earlier, you mentioned a, a tr working with a travel agency. Mm -hmm. is, what is the benefit of, of doing that? Do they get a cheaper room rate? or um, And what role do does a travel agency play in meeting setups? Often groups will use a travel agency to find hotel availability because it's a very exhausting search and their computer systems uh, give them access to lots of different hotel names and phone numbers and they can tell you ahead of time what hotels may or may, may not be available. Some groups want the travel agency to handle all of their airlines only and others want them to actually negotiate the contract. There are companies such as Conferon, Smith Buckland, Site Services that are meeting planning companies. We in the hotel call them 10 percenters because they will get 10 percent of the guest room rate for the work that they do for your organization or your company. And sometimes based on the volume of business that they do with our particular hotel or our particular hotel chain, yes, you can get a cheaper rate than you would have if you'd called on your own because we know that that organization has investigated this group very thoroughly if they are going to risk their reputation representing this organization and this organization's meeting we know that it's pretty solid that they know what they're talking about they can provide us all of the information that perhaps a meeting planner that hadn't planned this convention in the past wouldn't have uh, so often yes you can get a cheaper rate uh, but internally we know that 10 percent of our profits are going to go to the travel agency or the meeting planning company that can handle that. Uh, it, it really varies according to how much business that agency has given us in the past or how much we think they can give us in the future as to whether it truly will be a lower rate. Okay. Um, back to what your contract's going to look like. You'll have different rates based on your room type, on your suites. You'll notice here that we can confirm the following guest room rates. The so option one, we will confirm them to you. Often we won't do that more than two years out. Often we will, if we're doing it uh, further ahead, we'll do one of two options. One is a discount off the future rec rates. As I mentioned, our rate this year, often we'll say we'll give you 20 to 30 percent off whatever they are in 2005. Uh, very few meeting planners like to do this anymore because the rate of inflation has been very difficult to, uh, to predict. Right now it's very, very low, but most economists are saying it's going to increase significantly in the next couple of years. And so they don't want to subject themselves to that. Another option is that we will give you on the next page, option three, a rate escalator. So we'll agree ahead of time what your rate increase will be. Often we will say the consumer price index rate of inflation, or if the hotel um, is able to be in the driver's seat on this, we, our standard is 6% a year. Uh, labor cost is the single highest cost to a hotel, and the cost associated with the uh, health insurance uh, situation and workers' compensation and other things like that that have increased so much uh, have made our costs escalate at about 6% a year, even though 
uh, the normal inflation around the country is, has been hovering closer to four. So you do a, a lot of negotiation about the rates, and these rates are based on a percentage of how many rooms you use, when you're meeting. Uh, they're also based on uh, other factors as far as how much meeting space you're using at our hotel, and uh, that will all uh, result in a formula. We'll also tell you what our current guest room rates are, and then on the next page, We'll talk about whether it is commissionable or non-commissionable. It's very important that the hotel know ahead of time. Uh, and then the next section is something that's new to many people, a complimentary room ratio. The standard for most hotel chains is that we will give you one free room for every 50 rooms that are paid by your organization. And this is a very important thing to make sure that you do get uh, a larger meeting can get this, a smaller room, a uh, smaller meeting obviously is not eligible. This was not something that was on our meeting connections contract. But you want to be able to take care of your speakers. You want to take care of your staff ahead of time. Uh, often you can get a higher caliber speaker if you're taking care of their guest room and there's no cost affiliated to your organization for it. So that's very important. We have a, a unit cost of what type of room. The nicer the room, the more complimentary rooms, uh, the more rooms you needed to have picked up. Uh, a regular guest room is equal to 50 rooms, 50 rooms equals one unit. Uh, our presidential suite uh, really would require you paying for 250 rooms to get that room complimentary that night. So that is something that you can negotiate the type of room uh, you're getting and how many uh, units it would take to get that complimentary. And then certain groups will be able to get additional complimentary rooms over and above that. Often you're saying, well, our executive director's here and he expects a complimentary suite and I as the meeting planner deserve a suite. And very often, depending on how much revenue your group is bringing to the hotel, we will offer one to two suites over and above or we may offer upgrades for your speakers, the VIPs, at a special rate. And so that's something that you can negotiate based on what your needs are and based on what you're bringing to the hotel. The hotel is more than willing to give you some rooms for free in order to book hundreds of rooms at the hotel. Uh, the reservation method is just something that we like to know ahead of time, but again, this can be changed in a very short uh, amount of time is so that the hotel can fill out its computer form and accept reservations in the way that's best suitable for you. And there are no real contract terms that make it uh, more conducive for you to do one way or the other. Most hotels will pay for your reservation cards. They will not pay for them to be mailed, but they will pay for them to be printed. And most people, uh, most hotels will provide that complimentary based on three times the peak night usage. So if you're having a 500 room convention, the hotel would print 1,500 of these reservation cards for you complimentary. And that is something you, if you do choose that housing method that you should negotiate, that that will happen. Okay. Yes, do you have a question? Yeah, uh, it's, it's straying a little bit, but how, how willing and how uh, receptive would a hotel be to sending a package like that to students like us who are doing a project involving meeting planning? The big thick packet here? Right. Uh, yeah, j just let her know and I can send some to her and, and she can give them to you. I have normally just worked with the hotel school and I have provided materials for a number of the students doing projects. Over the we'll see what we can I get for in, that face-to-face -face meeting in October. Okay. I came in late. I didn't get your name. Uh, Jane Jordan. J. J A N E J O R D. -A. Nothing exotic. No Y yeah. in the middle. Don't all of you call Jane. <laughs> we'll see if we can't get <laughs> please 30 ask, packets please ask or so. Her and, and I'll provide the information that, that uh, she thinks just, is appropriate for your class. I just wanted to know who, who lectured. I wasn't going to call you <laughs> no, after a It's package. on your syllabus too. This, this yes. is just a general question. Is okay. not not not. You know, not you personally, but just in, in general meeting plan not meeting planners, but people in your position at other hotels sales around office. sales office. At uh, other hotels around the country, how receptive do you think they would be to something like that? Let me answer. Okay. okay. <laughs> you can speak for yourself too, but uh, the last time we taught this course, as long as my students identified themselves honestly and said I'm in an advanced meeting planning class and I'm working on a project, this isn't real, but these are the kinds of things that I would like to know. Uh, certainly Houston area hotels, which is what most of the contact was uh, directed toward, were very cooperative in providing materials. 
Just don't go in and waste their time letting them think that you're booking a convention for 10000 That's going to cause real ill will between U of H and the hotels. But uh, they were very cooperative in the past. You belong to three or four professional organizations as I do. You can make an honest inquiry. You can do it by facsimile, which in writing carries a lot more weight than just a simple telephone call where someone forgets you as soon as you hang up. If you send something by writing, member of ATLA, we're going to hold a convention in South Texas in June of 97. We'd like to start seeing what you have now. I don't foresee right, any Right, but problems. you need to identify who you are and what your official Absolutely. connection to that organization is. Absolutely. And some of those folks out there listening have those. Some of you aren't there yet. And okay. so just be honest. Let, about let them know so that they can spend the appropriate amount of time providing the information so. for you. And you'll notice on the inquiry form that I showed you at the very beginning, one of the first questions was, who makes the decision? <coughs> and the hotel person will not spend as much time talking to you if you're truly not a decision maker for that event. And, and we would appreciate you not misrepresenting what your role would be in, in obtaining the information. If you get some strange inquiries in the next week, let me know. Okay, I will. <laughs> we'll cross-check them. Uh, I will. What else uh, do the we The next need pages to... talk uh, similar information, what was on the smaller contract, the cutoff date, the meeting space, uh, meeting room rental is very important to, to discuss. At our hotel, and every hotel has its own ratio based on how much meeting space they have. We have 66,000 square feet of meeting space, and we uh, maximize our revenue if 30 square feet of meeting space is given for each guest room picked up. Some hotels won't be as scientific as we are, but we've really gotten it down to a science how much meeting space you are allotted based on how many guest rooms you're using. It's very important uh, that you have your program outlined and your needs uh, specified ahead of time. If you're just using 100 rooms in my hotel and I've got 850 more to sell, well, I'm not going to give you my entire ballroom and the majority of my breakouts because then I don't have anything to lure more conventions here. So it needs to be in proportion and if it's not in proportion the salesperson should try to work with you on choosing other dates uh, where that meeting may work because of the uh, type of group that's in the hotel. We're in a good position because we're near the convention center and often a group will meet uh, use our hotel facilities for guest rooms, but they will meet at the George R. Brown, so we may have a lot of meeting space available that we could give to a smaller meeting because the remainder of our rooms are being uh, booked otherwise. So that's why the flexible dates are there. Exhibit hall rental, not every hotel that you're going to use will have a full-fledged exhibit hall, but the larger trade shows will. We also have another group in here, Texas Lawyer, that's in our hotel right now that's using our exhibit hall. and. Over a thousand lawyers will be walking through there. Uh, it's very important that you work with an exhibit company, that you have insurance uh, because of all of that. There's a lot involved with an exhibit trade show, and again, that would be an, a whole other issue, but you do want to know your costs ahead of time of the exhibit hall. They're going to charge a flat fee if they're going to charge per booth, and what the hotel expects you to provide as far as insurance and, uh, and other labor. Uh, parking is something that can be negotiated depending on what the hotel situation is. Very often a hotel does not own their own parking garage, as we do not, and so it is negotiated separately. Other hotels have surface lots and it's provided free, but you may want certain spaces up front and you can negotiate VIP parking spaces. You can also negotiate transportation. On the next page we've got, uh, our hotel has its own limousine and you may want your VIPs or your important speakers to be picked up at the airport to just kind of put on the dog a little bit. And you can pre-negotiate that based on how much revenue you're bringing to us. So we'll talk about that and then there's a little salesmanship in our contract where we talk about the airport shuttle and it's non-stop to our particular hotel. Something you really need to find out ahead of time when you're making decisions. It's a very large cost. Uh, transportation to and from the airport or to and from other areas of town where you may be <coughs> needing to hold meetings. Uh, the performance clause is very, very important, and this was not in, in contract several years ago. This holds you accountable for uh, meeting the terms of this contract. And if you're, you do not perform, there is a dollar amount associated with that. Hotels calculate it different ways, some based on their missed profits, some will do it on pure revenue, the revenue you promised that they forecasted that they did not realize. You can negotiate different amounts on that, uh, but the hotel will make up 
a lot of their revenue. If they cannot resell their rooms, you will be liable for any rooms that are not, uh, that are not sold. Uh, a lot of this is, is legalese, basically. We don't want you holding the hotel liable for anything. We're talking about cancellation. If suddenly you can't hold this meeting for whatever reason, there are, there's a whole litany of reasons where we will let you out of the contract or we will want to be let out of the contract. If there's a hurricane in Houston, uh, different acts of God, uh, air airline strikes, reasons why you can't hold the meeting, the, the Persian Gulf War, we had, uh, had to use this quite a bit. We have had hurricanes uh, preclude us from holding meetings. And, uh, but if you do cancel for other reasons, there will be dollar amounts negotiated, and that will be based on the hotel's forecasted profits, and you need to be budgeting for that. If you are going to cancel, you need to make sure that you can pay those fees, and you'll have a way to do that. Uh, this talks about the, the rights that you do have uh, to cancel a contract. It's very wordy. Um, hotel contracts used to be very simple. Now a lot of our meeting planners feel like their legal departments need to review them because they are legally binding documents. My average contract that I work with is worth about $300,000. And when you think about the amount of money that you're talking about, I mean, that's a, a good-sized house. You wouldn't uh, buy or sell a house without having uh, official closing and lawyers present and that type of thing. Our sales managers are not trained lawyers, but they have power of attorney to represent our hotel and under the contract terms that we have in this template. And so it, it's sometimes an unfair advantage that the sales manager may wind up actually negotiating with the lawyer as far as certain contract terms. But don't expect a lot of these legal uh, clauses to be negotiated because our hotel's headquarters in Chicago, our lawyers there have designed these words for a certain reason in a certain way and your, ho your contract will be held up from approval uh, if you do need to change a lot of that wording. Yes? If the wording's in writing, there's no way you can alter it in orally. So what I'm saying is no matter what you get on the phone with them and they try and alter it, the written document will control it. That's what's there, that's what's there, and that's the only thing that's ever going to be led into evidence is the signatures and the intent of the parties is right there in that document. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay, we've got about three, maybe four minutes left, I think. Okay. So if there are big things we're missing that sure. you need to I just, skip to. I just want to tie it up with uh, letting you know that there are three basics uh, to negotiating with the hotel, and that's dates, rates, and space. And we've touched on that a little bit. Um, you, as a meeting planner, should get two of those three in your favor, and the hotel will ask for one in their favor. All right, if you need to meet on this particular date and you are not flexible on that, then you need to meet the hotel's terms for the amount of revenue they need to make on that particular date and the meeting space that's available to you on that date. And we will charge the rate that we need on that date. Okay? Now, if you have a budget meeting, a low budget meeting that you need to plan and you can only pay a certain rate, then you'll let the hotel choose the date so that you can get the space and the rate that you need, okay? And so basically that's all it boils down to, all this complicated uh, <laughs> contract aside. It's dates, rates, and space, and that's what makes a meeting, and that's what uh, you really are negotiating despite all these little sidebars we got into. It, it's basically making sure that your meeting is held when you want it and you've got the meeting space that you need and a rate uh, that uh, you can afford to hold your meeting. Okay. okay. Did we miss anything you need to show them here? I was just going to show that we have a very extensive meeting planner's guide that will help most large chains should have something like this. Okay. And they would probably all like a copy. It'll walk you through every, every bit of information that you need to plan a good meeting. You will not be uh, held liable for n not knowing this kind of information. We will provide it for you and give you timelines of when information should be to the hotel. Your meeting will turn out in this structure. This is a convention resume. Another convention we've got in next week, U.S. Aquatic Sports, and it outlines all the meeting space in tremendous detail, uh, and that is the final negotiations you will do with the hotel uh, as the meeting approaches, uh, right. finalizing those details. Okay, well, thank you very much. We appreciate your time and thank your you. being here with us. Yeah. See you next class. All right.